morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Do me a favor, wherever you're sitting, just kind of shake the person's hand who's sitting next to them. Tell them good morning. Come on, everybody, just reach over and look over and smile at somebody. Tell them good morning. It's good to see you this morning. It's good to see you this morning. Come on, find somebody real quick. Shake two more people's hands. Tell them good morning. Tell them good morning.
go start your all the pump. Just come down this way. Just quick if you can press in your weight to the end of the semester and you know you need just a few, just a little bit more energy just to help you make it just come this way. If you know you just need a little bit more energy, just come this way. If you know that's you, just come this way. Say, look, I just need just a little bit more. I was about to give up. I was about to quit. I thought about going back home, but I'm not pressing my way. We want you to get here right now. Don't you to get here right now, I want you to get here right now. Just you see, I'm pressing my way, I'm pressing my way. Now, those of you who are still sitting in the, still sitting in the bleachers, or still sitting in the chairs, I don't need you just watching, I need you praying. I need you praying. I, I know you, in this moment, you may feel forced to be here, but I need you to understand that some people think this serious. So can you do me a favor, can you just close your eyes and bow your head for a moment so even if this is not your moment, you won't distract somebody else. Can you do me that favor? All right, this is, this is the group you said you can't, you press your way. God's been good to you, you got them.
and killed 36 of them who retreated here on the snow in the Israelites with the paradox of the theory at the turn of the events and the courage of the way. And Joshua and the elders of Israel and of Israel tore their clothes and designated, threw dust on their head, and bowed face down on the ground before the ark of the Lord until the end. Verse 10. But the Lord said to Joshua, Get up, why are you lying face down like this? Israel has sinned and broken my covenant. They have stolen some of the things that I have commanded of that. Sorry. The things that I have commanded must be set apart from them. And they have only, and they and they have not only stolen, stolen them, but have not lied them and hidden the things in wrong their own wrong. I have just read you Joshua chapter 7, verse 1 through 6. Just a few announcements this morning. The Office of the Executive Vice President of the Chapman would like you all to know that on Tuesday night, Tuesday night, November 7th, 2017, from 6 to 7 p.m., we will be having our Tuesday night together Bible study. That's Tuesday, November 7th, from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. It's held in the Cyber Cafe. Uh, it is facilitated by several of the persons in the office of the Executive Vice President for the Chapter's Office. This Tuesday, I will be leading Bible study. Uh, if it's not myself, then Dr. Deborah Rogers, would you stand so we can see that Dr. Deborah Rogers will be leading sometimes and then also. Uh, Dr. Moses Goldman, our chaplain here and executive vice president, will be leading as well. So we invite you all, all to come out on Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. in the Cyber Cafe uh, for a Bible study. Also, attention potential December completers. Anybody in here finishing in December? Anybody finishing in December? I see a hand or two. Let's give them a, a hand clap. Amen. They've made it to the end of the journey. Amen. The senior major field test or your exit exam for potential December completers will be administered on Thursday, November 2nd, 2017 in the Greer Armor Building. Tuesday, November 2nd, 2017 in Greer Armor. Testing will begin promptly at 5 p.m. Please arrive 15 minutes early for your exam. If you have questions, please contact the Office of Institutional Research in CMAC 106 uh, or email Dr. Anderson, C. Anderson at lanecollegede.edu. Graduating seniors, fall 2017, spring 2018, and summer 2018. The final deadline to submit your graduation application is November 10th, 2017. Only completed forms with your advisor and division chairperson signatures will be accepted. All students, registration has opened for spring 2018. As well, um, those individuals uh, who need this information, and that's everyone, the FAFSA is now open and available to complete for the 2017 through 2018 school year. Please com complete your FAFSA ASAP to ensure your eligibility to register and attend classes for the fall 2018 semester. The Mass Communications Department would like to let you know that they will be holding an open house on Thursday, November 2nd in Shy Hall, which is the radio station, from 1 to 4 p.m. for faculty, staff, and students. Students will be giving tours of the television and radio facilities. They will discuss current and upcoming student programming. Refreshments will be provided. For more information, contact Dr. Perry or Dr. Miller for those announcements. I'd also like to let you know for our last announcement today that today, immediately following the selection by the concert choir, you will hear a select group of students who make up the new Jenny Elaine Ensemble. This group is named in honor of Miss Jenny Elaine because on November 12, 1882, the CME High School, later to become Lane College, began its first session under the guidance of its first principal and teacher, Miss Jenny Elaine. She was also the daughter of the founder, Isaac Lane. This first day of school marked the beginning of a powerful and ongoing commitment to the uplifting of people throughout the South, the nation, and the world. 
we introduce to you today the Ginny E. Lane Ensemble following the selection by the Lane College Choir. Let's give them a hand as they come and share with us again the Lane College Choir following them the Ginny E. Lane Ensemble. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's put our hands together and salute them as they share their gift.
I open my mouth to the Lord, and I won't turn back. I will go, I shall go, to see what the end's going to be. I open my mouth to the Lord, and I won't turn back. I will go, I shall go, to see what the end's going to be. Will you do me a favor and give uh, Miss Rainbow and the Concert Choir and the Jenny Elaine Ensemble another big hand? How many of you really do want to go on to the end and see what the end's going to be? Let me see your hands if you want to finish what you started. Amen. That's what we're saying. How many of you really want to finish what you started? Amen, amen. Reverend McKendra brought us down here earlier and said, if you are here and you just pressing your way and you need a little more energy, a little more oomph to make it to the end of the semester, amen? And we're going to go ahead on to see what the end is going to be. We give God praise and honor and glory for this uh, opportunity, for the privilege of being able to uh, come and to share with you on today. We bless God, we praise God, we magnify and glorify God for all of the many blessings that God has and continue to bestow upon our lives. Let me ask you to turn in your Bibles, and I would ask you to turn in your Bibles. I would ask you to take out your phone or your Bible and turn in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 7. Uh, and as you are finding that, just keep finding it as I pray. You, if you're looking for it, you don't have to stop and uh, wait until I finish praying because I'd rather for you to be there, amen, uh, when we get there. God, we give you thanks and praise and glory and honor for this day, for this moment. God, I need you. I need your anointing. I just need you, God, to anoint my mind and my heart and my soul and my spirit on today. 
I don't need to try to preach to impress anybody. I just need you to anoint me. I don't need to aim the message at anybody. I just need you to anoint me. I don't need to try to avoid stepping on anybody's toes or hurting anybody's feelings. God, I just need you to anoint me. For it is your anointing that destroys yokes. It is your anointing that transforms lives. It is your anointing of the gifts that you have given that gives us a greater sense of hope and purpose in life. So God, I need your anointing on today. And I remind you that you said to me that if I ask anything in accord with your will that you hear me. And because you hear me, I already have the petition that I desire of you. So I thank you for your anointing. And whatever happens, you receive the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Joshua chapter 7, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard. It's going to uh, read just a little different from uh, the way that it read. I'm going to read a couple of uh, verses from uh, when Coach Howard uh, read. Would you all give Coach Howard another hand for reading the scripture today? Amen. Only at a place like Lane College do you get a football coach, amen, to come up and read scripture in chapel. We give God praise for that. Joshua chapter 7. I want to start at verse 6. Joshua chapter 7, verse 6, and read a couple of verses that uh, Coach Howard did not read. He says in verse 6, Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the ground on his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening, he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. Joshua said, Our Lord God, why have you brought this people across the Jordan at all to hand us over to the Amorites so as to destroy us? Would that we had been content to settle beyond the Jordan. Oh Lord, what can I say now that Israel has turned their backs to their enemies? The Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? Oh, Lord God, why have you brought us to this place and allowed us to fail? I don't really have a, a, a subject or a thought today. I really have a question, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to chase the question uh, just for a few minutes through the text. What do we do when things don't go as we desire? What do we do when things don't go as planned? What do we do when things don't go as they should go? I, I want to draw some leadership principles from the life of Joshua that I believe will help us to overcome some of the obstacles and the challenges that we face in life that will help us to pull up when we find ourselves in a place and things aren't going quite the way we desire for them to go. They're not going quite the way that we expect them to go. And I believe to, to a great extent uh, that that hits all of us. I know it hits those of us who responded to the altar call earlier because we admitted that, that we're in a place where we need just a little more something to help us get across the finish line. Some of us came and, and we barely made it. We came out of high school and we barely made it. And, People had told us we couldn't go to college and Lane College accepted us and we came to Lane College and we made up our minds that we were going to turn a new leaf and we were going to be a good student. And then we got to Lane College, this Christian college, and we found stuff in this community that reminds us of where we left. And now we're not doing as good academically as we thought we would do. Things just have not gone as we planned them. Some of us got off to a good start. We, we had a 3.0, a 3.5 our first semester, our first year, and we thought we had this thing figured out, and we came back our sophomore year, and the habits that we developed our first year, we left them behind in our second year, and all of a sudden, what, what, what looked like I was going to have a good ride for four years at Lane College and graduated, go on to a great career, is just not going as I planned. 
Somebody thought they were going to graduate last year, and you found out that you didn't graduate last year, and you think you're going to graduate this year, but you'll go and sit down and talk to somebody, and you'll realize that if you're going to graduate this year, you got you to gotta change some things. Things are just not going the way that I planned them. There's some of us as faculty members and administrators, we came to this place and, and, and it, was our, it, was, it, it was our starting point. We were going to work here two or three years and get a few credentials and go on somewhere else. And somehow we find ourselves after 15 years, 30 years, we're still here. Things just didn't go the way we planned. What do we do when things don't go the way that we plan. Uh, Joshua, one of my favorite uh, characters and books of the Bible, Joshua took over leadership. And, and I want all of, who, all of us who are in a position of leadership or who, who think we're in a position of leadership or who aspire to be in a position of leadership, I especially want us to listen carefully today because Joshua took over leadership from Moses. And Moses had prepared Joshua to take over leadership for the Israelites. And for those of us who, who, who desire to be a leader or think we want to be a leader, let me, let me just draw your attention to something that's important about Joshua. He allowed Moses to mentor him. And he stayed under Moses' authority. Don't be trying to lead folk if you have not learned how to follow. L let me say that again. Don't, don't be trying to lead folk if you have not learned how to follow somebody. And even after you get in a leadership position, you'll still have to follow some folks. You'll still have to submit. That is, if you're going to be successful. And Joshua had learned how to lead. He had learned how to be successful. And he, and he took over. Moses had prepared him. And in Joshua chapter 6, God said to Joshua in chapters 1 and 2, uh, be strong and be courageous and, 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 and listen to everything that I tell you to do and obey my instructions. If you do everything that I told Moses to do, if you follow the things that Moses instructed you to do, you're going to have some success. And God took Joshua and the children of Israel in Joshua chapter 6 to a place uh, 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 called Jericho. Jericho was a, was a big city, a fortified city, had great armies and lots of people. And Joshua, God says to Joshua, you're going to take this city. And Joshua, believing that God would do what God said he, he would do if he followed the instructions of God. And God told him to do some crazy things. And Joshua and all of the people that were with Joshua did everything that God told them to do. And they toppled this city called Jericho. But God had also told them, when you go to Jericho and you destroy the land, don't take any of the spoils. And this guy Achan that we were talking about here disobeyed that. And so they leave Jericho riding high, everything going good, things are going great. I'm in this great position of leadership. And God says, now go down there and take Ai. And I can imagine Joshua just thinking to himself, Ai will be nothing because I just toppled Jericho. Uh, uh, one, 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 one of the things that you got to learn about being a leader is that if you're going to be successful in life, you can't let your guard down when you experience a little bit of success. You can't turn your back on God. You got to be consistent. And when things start to go well, that's the time for you to press in even harder. Most of us press in hard when things are going wrong. But if you're going to be successful enough to help yourself and help somebody else, you got to keep pressing in when things are going good. And Joshua, and Joshua, Joshua, uh, Joshua says, you all go down there and take a look. He was a good planner. He was a good leader. He didn't go into things blindly. Somebody need to hear that. He took time to plan, make sure he knew where he was going. He says, you all go down there and take a look. And they came back and they said, oh, that's nothing. Just send a few thousand folk down there. We can take this land. It's, it's no big deal. And they went down there and got their tails whipped. Listen to me, listen to me. At Jericho, they won a battle that they were supposed to lose. At Ai, they lost the battle because they were supposed to win. At Jericho, they obeyed all that the Lord told them to do. At Ai, somebody had disobeyed God. Somebody say there's sin in the camp. 
I, I've been trying to get away, uh, Freeman, I've been trying to get away from this thing called sin all semester long. And every time I, I get ready to start preparing a message for chapel, so, somehow that sin thing com comes up. And I guess there's somebody in here, maybe three or four of us in here, that God wants to know this semester that the presence of sin in your life will always cut off the presence of God in your life. That the presence of sin in your life will always make things difficult for you. And I know we don't like to talk about sin and we like to act like it doesn't exist, but it exists. And whenever we fail to obey all of the things that God has instructed us to do, then things are not going to go the way that we planned them. And so they went down there and they lost a battle that they were not supposed to lose after winning a battle that they were not supposed to win. And so what do you do when things don't go the way that you plan, when things don't go the way that you expect? I'm not going to have time to chase through all of this, so, so I'm just going to chase a few things, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list some things for you, and then I'm going to come back and grab a couple of other things, and then we'll be finished. I want you to see this, and, 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 and I don't have time, certainly, to read through all of it, but let me encourage you to go back and read Joshua chapter 6, 7, and 8, not in your spare time, but make time. Make time to go back and read Joshua chapter 6, 7, and 8 to get the full picture. So what do you do when things don't go wrong? The first thing that Joshua did was that he sought God. When things go wrong, when things don't go expect the, the way that you expect them, seek God. Joshua went to God. We read that earlier. The second thing it, it, uh, that happened was God told Joshua to stop whining. Stop moping around. When things aren't going the way that you expect them to go, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get up! Stop moping around, pointing fingers at everybody else, blaming somebody else. Administration didn't do this, and the faculty didn't do that, and the students won't do this, and security won't do that. Stop it! Get up! Get up! Stop complaining. Stop whining. The third thing is, is Joshua obeyed God. When things aren't going the way that you want them to go, look at your neighbor and say, obey God. The next thing that we see happen is we saw Achan confess his sin. He confessed his sin. Look at your other neighbor and say, confess your sin. Oh, you got to fess up. You got to admit it. You got to admit it. The fifth thing that we need to do when things aren't going the way that we expect them to go is we need to continue to obey God. We need to, and, I, and, and if you don't get anything else, I want you to get this. You have to obey all of God's instructions. Some of us obey some of the things that God tells us to do, but we don't obey all of the things that God tells us to do. Look at your neighbor and say, obey all. Yeah, you got to obey all of God's instructions. And then, and then the last thing, the last thing that you have to do when things aren't going the way that you want them to do, you have to worship God. You have to continue to seek God. When this thing was over, Joshua built an altar to God, a place of worship to God. And then he set the people down and he read all of the commandments. He preached all of the commandments of God to them. We got to see God. So let me go back now and just chase a couple of these. The first one I want to chase is this notion of Joshua seeking God. And, and again, if, you, if, if, if you're a leader, you think you're a leader, you aspire to be a leader, you need to get this. And so they'd gone up here and they had lost this battle that they were supposed to win. And Joshua knew by faith that they were supposed to win. And Joshua knew by faith what God had told him he would do. And Joshua knew by experience that they had won this battle of Jericho. And Joshua says, something is wrong. Things aren't going the way that they're supposed to be. Let me, let me tell you something, beloved. Stop accepting negative things in your life. Stop accepting bad things in your life as the way it is. These folk run around here telling you, well, that's just life. That's the way it is. No, baby, when you're walking with God, you don't have to be up under the devil's feet all the time. When you're walking with God, you don't always have to be on the bottom. The Bible says you'll be the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. What? Above and not beneath. Stop Stop accepting failure as God's lot for your life. Joshua said something is wrong. We're supposed to be winning. 
But he didn't stop pointing fingers at folk. He went to God. And he said, oh, God, what is going on here? Why are we not winning this? You told me that if, I have, that if I'm strong and have good courage and obey you and do the things, that we would have success. And we sent some folks up there. I followed all of the strategies that I had learned. I did all that I know to do. And we went up there and lost. And God says to Joshua, get up, boy. Stop sinning. Stop whining. Go and find out what's wrong. And God says to Joshua, call all of the people and examine them. Look at somebody else and say accountability. Oh, yeah, there has to be some accountability. If you're going to be a leader, you got to hold yourself accountable and you got to hold somebody else accountable. And God says, God says, call them all in here. And, say, and, and God says, and here's the thing, here's the thing we have to learn about leadership, uh, uh, Mr. McGee. Here's the thing we have to learn about leadership. If we're leading under the authority of God, we don't have to look for stuff. God will show it to us. You don't have to lay awake at night worried about who's doing what and who's not doing what. Now, when God shows it to us, we got to act on it. But God will show it to us. God says, God says call them all in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to point out the tribe. I'm going to point out the family, and I'm going to point out the boy in the family that messed up. And if you will take care of him, then I will, my anger that is on you because you have done what I told you not to do, my anger will be lifted. And God, and then and, and Joshua brought them to him, and when he held him in accountability, he said, what did you do? And Achan told him what he did. We got to confess it. Listen, if you get caught red-handed, just say it. Amen? If, if, if somebody comes to you and say, uh, did you do so-and-so? Did you study? Yeah, I studied. I don't know why I failed that test. No, just admit it. No, I didn't study. Did you go to class? Yeah, I go to class. You pull up the roll and look, you ain't been to no classes. Stop it. People already know anyway. Just stop it. Just admit it. Just admit it that you have a problem. And so Joshua says to him, God says to Joshua, get up, stop crying, hold people accountable. And as God held, and, and as Joshua held the people accountable, then God turned their situation around after Achan confessed his sin. And then Joshua continued to do the things that God told him to do. And so after they did that, God told, God, God told Joshua, now go up and this time you take everybody with you. Here's the lesson. Don't be taking stuff for granted. If you're going to be a great leader, don't ever get to the place where you think to yourself, I got this. I know how to do this. I got all of the strategies. I've studied at the best schools. I've looked at all of the best practices. I know how to do this. No, you better continue to seek God for wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And when Joshua continued to seek God and they did all that they were supposed to do, then God restored them and they won the battle at Ai and everything began to turn back in their favor after they had admitted their faults, after Joshua had realized that he had a leadership crisis, after they had obeyed all of the instructions that God had given, given to them. After they had done all of that, God restored them and God gave them the victory that they were supposed to have in the first place. And then Joshua brought the people together and he built an altar where the people could come and worship God. Why we got to come to chapel? I'm going to say it again one more time. Why we got to come to chapel? Because God has made everything possible that you are experiencing. That's why you, even when you don't realize it, God has blessed you beyond your measure of blessing. If it wasn't for the church and it wasn't for a chapel and it wasn't for God, there would be no Lane College. You got to be able to come to a place and give God thanks and praise and honor and glory for all of the things that God has done. And Joshua built this altar and they began to worship God. And then the text says somewhere around Joshua chapter 8 near the end of the of the chapter it says then Joshua read all of the commandments to them everything that Moses had instructed them to do he read all of them I'm going to say this and then I'm going to close I started off with the idea 
that if things are not going the way that they're supposed to be going in our lives, we need to seek God. Joshua's intention for seeking God was to hear God clearly and then to obey what God had said. And somebody says, but preacher, I don't know how to hear God's voice. I don't know when God is speaking to me. I don't have time to teach you all of that, but I'm going to give you just a couple of things that you need to do, and, and you'll be on your way. The first thing is, if you want to seek God, if, if, if you want to hear God, just learn how to be still in the presence of God. Freeman, you blessed me Sunday when you preached, when you said if you, God is just right there. Most of the time, God is just right there. We just don't recognize who he is. And if we'll just get quiet and still long enough, God will reveal God's self to us. Some of our problem is that we run too much. Some of our problem is that there's too much noise around us. Some of our problem is that we always got to be doing something. Some of our problem, somebody has told us we have attention deficit disorder. Somebody has told us we can't be still. Somebody has told us that we can't learn. Stop. Be still and know that I am God. Get still in the presence of God. And then the second thing is learn to pray to God. You say, well, I don't know how to pray. Well, it's not that complicated. Just tell God what's in your mind. Just tell God what's on your heart. Get in a closet somewhere where nobody else can hear you. If you're not confident, if you're worried about what somebody else is going to think when you pray, then get away from everybody else and just start talking to God about whatever it is that you're concerned about. Call the names of the folk that you think are mistreating you. Speak to God and just say, God, I got this problem and I don't know what to do about it. Will you talk to me? And then the last thing, you want to learn how to hear God's, word, hear God's voice, begin to read God's word. And I didn't say understand it. I said read it. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3 says, you are blessed when you what? When you read it. Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. You don't have to understand it, just read it. The blessing is just in reading it. And if you will be still and quiet and you will begin to pray to God and you'll begin to read God's word, when God begins to reveal God's self to you and God begins to speak to you, you'll know what you're supposed to do. And when you start to do those things that you know you're supposed supposed to do, then God will turn those things around in your life that are not going the way that they should be going. What do you do when things are not going the way that you expect them to go? Simply put, seek God, hear God, and obey God. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, your hearts are open. And God is ministering to you on today. And as your head is bowed and your eyes are closed and your hearts are open, just ask God, just, just whisper and say to God, like Joshua said to God, ah, Lord God, why are things not going the way that I want them to go? Why are things not going the way that I expect them to go? What is it in my life that's out of line with your plan and your purpose for me? And if God doesn't answer you right now, just keep listening until God answers. And when God answers, just obey what God is saying to your heart and watch God turn things around in your life as he turned things around in the lives of the Israelites and in the life of Joshua. Would you stand to your feet? And as you stand to your feet, I want to just pray a prayer of benediction over you and bless you. Don't walk, just stand, just stand. Don't walk, just stand. Don't walk, just stand. I just want to pray a prayer of blessing over you and then we'll be gone. Would you take the palms of your hands and just turn them up and you're just saying to God, I'm receiving this blessing unto, un, uh, that is being prayed today. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and fill you with all great peace. And together we all said amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and I love you.